this playlist deals with some aspects of Eurocode 2 version 2023. Watch this uh, playlist for further selected topics. This video is about clause 9, the serviceability limit state, and it will deal with the minimum reinforcement to avoid yielding part 1. Minimum reinforcement to avoid yielding, it's uh, uh, clause 9.22, and uh, it will deal with the minimum reinforcement where the crack width is not specified and the steel stress uh, is equal to the yield strength of the reinforcing steel. In the right corner, upper cor right upper corner, uh, you will see <clears throat> in the next slides, every time I will repeat what type of minimum reinforcement uh, we are dealing with. In Eurocode 2 2004, the present Eurocode, it was called minimum reinforcement for crack control. And that was in chapter 7.3.2. This is now confusing. Why, why do they call it now to avoid yielding? And what does it mean? I'm not sure what it means. Minimum reinforcement to avoid yielding. At the same time, the steel is yielding. So what's uh, What's the meaning of this? So it's not very clear. Uh, in clause 9.22, uh, part one, it states that the required minimum area of reinforcement to avoid yielding shall be calculating by applying the principle that the reinforcement enforcement working at characteristic yield stress should balance the moment that cracks the section acting together with the relevant actual force NED. So it's important to see characteristic yield stress and then that the moment that cracks the section, that's where the reinforcement should be calculated for. Again, avoid yielding. I'm not sure what it really means. So pure bending now. This is formula 9.2. It is stated that the minimum reinforcement must be bigger than this term. It's a little bit strange. Why do they tell, tell us it must be bigger or equal to? In the version of 2004, it was simple. The minimum reinforcement is equal to something. And if your present reinforcement in the section is more than IS min, it's OK. If it's less, it's not OK. But what does that this mean? It's a little bit confusing. So I suppose that formula 9.2 means RS min W1 must be equal to. So RS min W1 is the minimum reinforcement at the most tensioned phase. So W1 means always the most tensioned phase. Minimum for minimum reinforcement as for the steel. KH is the effect of non-uniform self-equilibrating stresses due to shrinkage and hydration heat. So it's a coefficient that is a function of the dimensions of the section. And KH in formula 9.5 is defined as such. Let's state it here on, the, on the, the slide. First, it is not clear that if this is this, what should we use when there is not a rectangular section? That's not clear. So we assume that it's only valid for rectangular sections. But how do you read this formula? This is not mathematic as we know it. This is something strange. You can make an interpretation in very different ways of this formula. So instead of using formula 9.5, I propose to use a more regular and more acceptable way of writing equations, which is which when kh is equal is equal to 0.8 when the minimum dimension of width and height of width and depth is smaller than 300 millimeters, and so on in three different phases. The previous formula it's too complicated and and it's it's um, uh, you, you can mis make misinterpretations of it. 
FCT effective, uh, we will take uh, it equal to FCTM, uh, which is the mean tensile strength of concrete, and which is the first line, uh, FCTM, when T is bigger than T reference. T reference is in fact the reference time that you have defined FCK, the characteristic, the characteristic value of the compressive strength of the concrete. So most of the time, it is 28 days. But the uh, Eurocode 2 2023 allows you to uh, have a concrete reference which is different than 28 days. So that's why there is a difference like this. So for T, let's say bigger than 28 days, bigger or equal, it's FCTM. And then it says that FCT effect, effective, it's also the tensile stress of the concrete in function of time when T is smaller than 28 days. Now, you can take it at seven days or 14 days or 12 days. So what kind of minimum reinforcement do we need now? And why is the minimum reinforcement needed for, F, for FCTM at the time of seven days? So it's, it's something that I've never used in practice, this line. I always lose FCTM at T reference equals to 28 days. We can now calculate the ratio of the minimum required reinforcement according to the code 2023 with reference to the code, the present code of 2004. You just divide the two formulas and then you see that this is the proportionality factor. Uh, for uh, bending, a ACT in the, in the present code is of course AC divided by two, the concrete section, the half of the concrete section. Now we can compare easily the minimum reinforcement by this formula. We know K in 2004 was defined by this formulation and KH, we have seen it in the previous slide, it's also something similar like that. Then we still have the difference of FCT effective in, for 2023 and FCT effective for 2004. So I will take the mean tensile strength and I re, uh, uh, repeated the formulas for FCTM in both codes. Now you must know that this new formulation is more simple. But the difference between 1.1 to FCK to the power one third and the difference between the logarithmic formulation is neglectable. So it's almost the same. So in fact, you can use this. Now we, we look at slabs and we have uh, uh, calculated the uh, minimum reinforcement ratio with respect to the present code. And on the x-axis, it's the concrete quality. On the y-axis, it's that ratio. And we've done that for different values of slabs, depths ranging from 300 to 500 millimeters. The width is 1,000 millimeters. Now, this is uh, an exaggerated scale, this because you see this is 0.8 and this is 0.775, so it's almost 0.8. So you can say that there is an overall increase for all depths, which is about 20% decrease of the value uh, of the Euro, of Eurocode 2004. We also see there is a slight difference when you reach high strength concrete. The different uh, difference in depth, it's not much, but it is there. So the uh, larger the slab depth is, the more, uh, uh, the less, well, sorry, the less the ratio becomes. So there's an overall decrease of 20%. That's, that's the thing that we have to know for slabs. You can rearrange all the data and you can make on the X axis the uh, 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 depth of the slab ranging from 200 to 500, one meter width. And on the Y axis, the ratio, you will see again the, the, the change between 0.8 and 
seven eight, so it's almost the same. It's it's uh, it's like twenty percent reduction, and you will see that as from uh, three hundred millimeters, you will have uh, an increase in the decrease of the ratio. The uh, different curves is for uh, concrete quality that increases from the top towards the bottom of the curves. So this is C90 and this is C50. But again, because of the scale, it's almost the same. We can regard it as the same. For beams, we have ex uh, again the um, uh, graph with on the x axis the concrete quality, the y axis the ratio, and then the different curves it's uh, uh, the depth of the beam. It is calculated for beams where the width of the beam is half the depth. This is the most economical beam, so the width is half of the depth. When we we, we draw now a line when the ratio is one, and then we know that above this line, it's an increase in minimum reinforcement. And on the bottom of this line, it's a decrease of minimum reinforcement. We see that the lowest part is for small depth beams. That's a beam 400 by 200. And that's an, a 15% decrease on the Upper side, it's a 15% increase, and this is for slabs of 800 millimeters height and a depth and a width of 400. You will see that the, the, the calculations for 900 and 1000 are below that of 800. So 800 is a special is a special depth. Let's put it this way. We remember, or, or we, the most important conclusion is that you have an increase of 15% and a decrease of 15% and that it is uh, only for uh, small beams, you will have a, a decrease and in most cases you will have an increase in minimum reinforcement to avoid yielding. So that's important to remember. For slabs, it's an overall decrease. For beams, it's in fact an overall increase in uh, reinforcement. We can rearrange the data and we can look for the beams. We see here the depth of the beams on the X axis, on the Y axis is the ratio again. And we do that for different concrete qualities ranging from C50 to C90. And you see immediately that the influence of the concrete quality is very slow. It's very low. We also notice that there is a special point for a beam depth of 800. We've seen that also here. So there's a, apparently a very special depth of beam. The point where there is break even, it means that the minimum reinforcement to avoid yielding is equal to that of the present code 2004. This point means that the depth of the beam is between 586 and 620. So you can say it's about 600 millimeters. From that onwards, bigger than 600, there's an increase in minimum reinforcement. Slower, lower than 600, there's a decrease in uh, minimum reinforcement. Minimum reinforcement to avoid yielding. We are in this case. We know that 9.221 is this text, and we have seen pure bending, and now we will look at pure tension. The formula 9.3 is given uh, like it is on the slide, and you see immediately that the minimum reinforcement uh, at W1, which is that the most tension phase is equal to the minimum reinforcement at the least tension phase because it's pure tension. So the whole section is in tension. So those two minimum reinforcements are equal and are given by this formula. 
AH, again, is the effect of non-uniform cell equilibrating stresses due to shrinkage and hydration heat. We have seen that FCTF can be taken at FCTM. Now we can make, again, the proportionality of the, do, uh, of the minimum reinforcement for tension to avoid yielding for the two coats, and we end up with exactly the same formula as we had for bending. So same conclusions are, are, are valid here. Uh, for ease of use, I repeated the formulation of the factor K and of FCTM in the two codes.